want to be remembered as someone who helped the people around me and made the world a better place. And this is one of the ways I do that. I'd like to be remembered as someone that really cared about their, their patients and would strive to do the very best hearing care for them. Uh, someone that uh, never gave up and just kept um, working through all types of challenges in order to um, do the best they can for patients as well as for their family members. I want my legacy. I want on my tombstone to know that people knew and knew me because I really cared about others and that I helped make an impact. And this is the stuff. I work in a clinic where, you know, we're in an area that's affluent and to be able to tap into actually helping people no matter if they have the monetary means or not is important, but even more so to be able to work as this big collaborative family to help people that are coming from all walks of life um, helps m me know that if I passed away tomorrow, my legacy for my practice or me as an audiologist, my cup is full. So you don't really get to pick your legacy, right? You get to plant seeds and in generations they see the garden that you've planted. So I'm hoping to leave seeds of joy and patience. I'm hoping to leave kindness and warmth to every patient regardless of language or nationality, income level. Those are the seeds I'm hoping to plant for my future garden. So this is pretty religious, but I want my maker to one day say, well done, when I get there. Um, in terms of my professional legacy, um, I bought a business, I bought an existing business, and I sure hope it's transformed into a much better place for workers and patients alike. My legacy um, would be the people that are part of my practice. Um, the people who have found that this is a great um, place to work and that what they do makes a big difference in people's lives. And, and I hope that continues and grows. Um, that, that should be my legacy. All uh, Finding people who find meaning in, in their lives by the work they do here. I would like my legacy to be one of kindness and connection. I would like to be known as a person who helped connect people back to the world, back to their family, and back to themselves. My legacy for my office would be the same. I want patients, I want to be known as a place where patients came to be connected back to the world. So when we think about legacy, and especially professionally, and for me as a former business owner, I really want people to feel like I did right by my patients and my staff and the community. So for me, I was incredibly fortunate that two of my team members wanted to purchase my practice. And then the fact that they want to keep it in Entheos was a very important goal for me. So because they are continued members of Entheos, I know that everyone's going to be well taken care of. They have a group who are going to mentor and support them and also allow them to continue to do the humanitarian work. So I've been incredibly fortunate um, that it all came together for me. Uh, my own nonprofit, the North Shore Hearing Foundation, can continue to live at Atlantic Hearing Care. So that certainly um, leaving the business and the nonprofit is something I'm very proud of and I hope continues. Uh, my legacy, I think I would like to just be remembered as somebody that offered kindness and, and care about others, to others. Um, I think that's really the most important thing to me. I really try to lead with kindness and um, help others as much as I possibly can. The legacy I want to leave isn't mine personally, but it's for Alabama Hearing Associates. When we started this practice over 20 years ago, um, 
We started with just a small idea that we can make a difference and do it better than anyone else. And over the years, it's grown into this beautiful, beautiful thing that not only helps people, but helps them by providing the best care that they could ever imagine. And what's important to me is that in our community, even in our state, that people know Alabama Hearing Associates as the place to go when they are having trouble with their hearing or they're having a hearing disorder. That means more to me than anything with my personal name on it. But that Alabama Hearing Associates is going to be the place you go for your hearing care, whether or not uh, you're a private pay individual or if you don't have the income or the means, then we're there for you too because our community is everything and we want to be part of that community and we want everyone from you know one end of the spectrum to the other end to you know feel like they've they've come to the right place and know us at the top of their mind as the best service the most caring compassionate people and uh, the people that are going to support them in the long run. Yeah, so for my legacy, I really just want to continue on with what Dr. Rahm has already built. Um, I think that's both of our, our goals here so far is just to continue on what he started, make this uh, bigger, better, um, and just bring more awareness to the community and education on hearing health care. I want to be remembered as somebody who served, somebody who gave, and somebody who enjoyed it. That's what I would say about this trip and how it makes me feel. Um, this has been really fun. It's just been a ton of fun to be with the other audiologists, to uh, share in this with other people, uh, to, yeah, it's been a ton of fun. Um, as being a mentor and being a lifelong learner, you can't rest on your laurels. I want people to remember me as the person who always put their family and church first and managed to bring those important things into their job every day. I also hope to be remembered for having a successful career without ever treating patients unfairly to get ahead. I want to be known as someone who always listened to patients and made sure they were taken care of so that I can go home at night feeling proud of the work that I've done. There's a little part of me that wants to be remembered for being the best audiologist in the state of Nebraska. But I really would like to be remembered for being a person who loves her family, loves her friends, and is active in her community, and takes care of her patients with love and compassion, and makes the world just a little bit better. I really want to be remembered for my service, that I served others and made their lives better. It is the reason I think we all are here. I think my legacy would be that I'd want uh, people to remember me as somebody who saw um, the brightness and the light in people and helped draw that out through better hearing, whether that be in the office or through nonprofit work, um, improving our relationships through better hearing. I believe um, helps shine that internal light inside of all of us really, really bright. And um, I'm really honored to be in a profession that allows me to do, to participate in this magical work. I'd like to be remembered as someone who made a difference in someone's life. And if I made them laugh in the process, all the better. I want to be remembered as a helper. I want to be remembered as someone who cares and wants to make a difference in the world. For me, I think that I want my legacy not to be material goods or things. Um, I want it to be the love that I've left behind. Um, the grace that I've showed, that is what legacy is to me. Hello, Dusty Jessen here, coming to you from beautiful Jamaica. I want my legacy to be simply that I was a good person and that I made a positive difference in the world. Uh, I want my children and my grandchildren to know that I was willing to work hard and 
do what needed to be done to help other people and I hope that I will inspire them to do the same. Thanks. Wow, my legacy, that's such a huge thing because it's all of this has to be um, continuing without us. And my legacy is honestly the continuation of not just hearing the call, but grace hearing and, I, and setting things sustainably that um, in 50 years it's still happening and I'm not there. What do I want my legacy to be? I think I want it to be where people remember how I made them feel that I want them to be heard and felt like they were listened, uh, that, and that's in patients, that's in uh, students that we mentor, that is my fellow audiologists and my staff. I just want to make sure that they are heard and felt it to be important. That's my legacy. I want to be remembered for being a good audiologist, an honest person, and for doing the right thing, whatever that may be. I don't want a funeral if you're watching. Um, I, don't get me wrong, nothing against people that, that have funerals, but I want to celebrate life every day. And I, I don't want people to, uh, to say I never didn't celebrate with them. So first and foremost, I'm going to quote uh, a guy named Warren Zevon, all right, who's, who's passed. But I loved one of his, I loved all of his songs, but the one that sticks out is Enjoy Every Sandwich, right? Um, so wherever I am, whoever I'm with, that's where I've chosen to spend my time. I don't waste time. Uh, doing stuff that isn't rewarding or fun or that doesn't fill my cup for the most part. I'm at that point in life where if I'm going to do something, it's because I want to do it. So if you're in my life and we're spending time together, I'm enjoying every sandwich with you because we're together. Um, so that's the simple answer, right? The, the, I guess the, the deeper issue, the legacy, the long-term thing is, is just that I showed up, right? Um, I tried my best. I, I put out a hand, I lifted people up, I, I tried to set the example, and, and, and I'm sure if I do have a funeral or people get together and talk about me, I guarantee you there's some haters out there and there's some people I did wrong. So I'm going to apologize right now to anybody who I haven't done right by, and uh, my legacy is I didn't mean to, right? Um, I'm sorry, um, and hopefully I can come back in another life and make it up to you. Um, but that's kind of silly, but it's the truth. I, my sincere legacy that I'd like to leave behind is I just, I showed up and I tried, I had a smile on my face, I was optimistic, and I, I, I helped create a path for others behind me. You know what, I, I always want to be remembered as somebody that contributed, somebody that jumped in whenever help was needed, that didn't think about, you know, who was noticing or who was watching, but that I was in the trenches, doing the work, getting the things done, and, you know, that I did it with a smile, that I greeted somebody or saw them. Sometimes it's just a matter of making eye contact and seeing that person and and I hope that I've done that for at least one person on this trip. When I think about what I would want my legacy to be, it's not something I've thought a lot about. I, I want my son to be proud of me. That's my most important, uh, the, what's most important to me. I want my son to be able to say my mom helped people, my mom did good. That's really my my driving force that when I see him and he, he I see that he's proud of me that what that's what that's what makes me keep going uh, maybe it's not what other people say but that's what I think about I want my son to feel like he has a mom that is, has done good I honestly don't really think I'm that important for anyone to really remember me but if you do I'd like to be remembered as somebody that just doesn't give a yeah. Cheers. The question was, what is our legacy? And I just kept thinking anything I'd have to say would sound trite, even though I really meant it. But then I just started thinking that you know, we're always focused on the person sitting in front of us. We're, we're focused on the patient. We want them to hear better, you know, better hearing, better living. We're going to make sure that we're improving their quality of life, their ability to communicate with others, you know, enjoy all that. 
But I then started thinking about the fact that there are a whole lot of people out there that don't know me and I don't know them, but I'm affecting their quality of life too because I helped their friend, their loved one hear better and now their life is better because they're able to communicate, preserve relationships with our patients. And so I just really like the idea of I'm helping people who I don't even know. I just think that's kind of cool. And I didn't use the F word. I'd like to be remembered as somebody who's loving and generous. And if I can achieve that, then I've achieved everything I wanted in life. To me, and it's difficult for me to put it in words, but I think just a legacy is typically tied to an individual's ego. Now, I don't mean ego in a negative manner, but in the identity of the self, right? So I am trying to be less and less tied to my ego, if you will. So in that respect, I don't know if there are really needs to be a legacy for me. I think to me, the, the continuity of the vision and what we've created, the continuity of that and expanding on that for future is more important than, hey, Ram did this or Ram created this. Well, I would say we all want to be remembered as the helpers, the ones who are there when needed. I love helping people to hear better as most of us do, um, but in my everyday work life, I get paid to help people hear better. And there's still so much value in that, but there's something special about being on either a humanitarian trip or even working with somebody in my own nonprofit project at home, my own Hearing the Call Rocket City, in that when you're working with somebody, helping them when they can't pay you back, when there's nothing more in the, the, the reimbursement than the joy or the, the peace of knowing that you've helped someone that would not otherwise have been able to receive help. My favorite um, time when I was able to give back was, gosh, almost 10 years ago, I went to Guatemala with a group from my church and it was to a village where um, we knew ahead of time that there was a gentleman who didn't hear well. So I bought a pocket talker and took it with me and some batteries from Costco and took it not knowing what I would find. I didn't have an otoscope or any way to test his hearing on this trip, but I was able to give him the pocket talker. And it was fun to work through an interpreter to be able to show him how to put the headphones on and turn the volume up on his little box. And um, his wife was very excited and she was talking into the microphone and it was just neat to see that huge smile um, light up his face when he was able to hear better. Um, this wasn't a hearing aid. This is just a, a headset with a, a little microphone. But uh, later on in the trip, my son saw him walking down the road and he was holding that microphone up, listening to the birds and the trees. And um, it just, it was so wonderful to be able to help him do that. And um, probably two years later, um, groups from our church were still going back to this same village in Guatemala, found out that he was dying. I think he had kidney problems. And um, he was really on his deathbed at that time. And my pastor got the opportunity to go and spend some time with him and pray with him. And he still used that pocket talker. He's laying in his bed with the headphones on. And my pastor was able to pray with him in that, that little microphone. So I would say, unlike any other time when I've helped somebody to hear better, that's, that's my favorite way. That's my favorite give back story. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Graham and I'm so pleased to be here with you in Fort Wayne. This was such a great exercise to think through as to what I hope to be remembered for. So here goes. A man of faith, not a man of rules. A big picture man who understands the value and the need for details. A creative man who refuses to be boxed in by others. A man who knows which side of eternity he's going to be on and is not afraid to share it. 
A man who knows what he wants and doesn't easily suffer fools. A man who is determined and intentional. A man who tries to see the best in everyone that he meets. A man who tries to live the thumper theorem in life. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. And perhaps most importantly, a man who has learned to love, to trust, and to laugh, especially at himself. So thanks for inviting me here this week. I hope you've had a great conference. What legacy do I want to leave? I would like to leave a legacy of doing as much good as I can in the world and inspiring others to do the same. From simple things, from complimenting someone in an elevator, to using my time, talent, and treasure to be able to deliver the gift of hearing.